At the Christmas party, my 32-year-old wife Julie and my 36-year-old colleague Marcus were seen making out on the patio. Marcus and I are employed by the same department. Since Julie and I haven't had a confrontation yet, everything I've said is based on what I've observed and indirect proof. I have a suspicion that their affair began following the last Christmas celebration, but they had been deceiving each other. It was my first office party, and I was new to the company. All right, so prior to that, Marcus, and I didn't get along well at work, not because I was new, but rather because he saw me as a threat. I took on some of Marcus's responsibilities during the first week of my employment, which I effectively automated with the help of my software knowledge. Everyone, say Marcus, was impressed that I completed the work that took him a week to complete in just three days. He made several attempts to look for a weakness in my work, but he was unsuccessful. The management gave him a hard time for not thinking along the same lines as me. This didn't really help me at work though. Marcus was a well-liked person who was actually more of a liar and gossiper. Do people not enjoy spreading rumors? He therefore belonged in every office group, while I'm more of an introvert and preferred keep to myself. I leave for work, complete my tasks, and return home. With my wife and my little group of college friends, I was content. We had our yearly Christmas party at work two months later. My spouse and I arrived. Julie is undoubtedly a stunning woman who turns heads wherever she goes. She takes care to present her flawlessly symmetrical features by dressing elegantly. Julie and I were having fun and forming bonds with our fellow employees. People began to gather on the dance floor as the night wore on. I declined Julie's insistence that we dance, not a self-assured dancer and most especially not at work parties. The following instant I saw Marcus approaching our table and asking for my wife's hand to dance, so I believe he would have observed the neck, pushed her away from his face and said, let me give you a good show. We don't have much time before your lowlife husband comes here searching for you. Everything was captured on camera. My entire body went numb. I was unable to feel anything. I'm not sure how long it was before a janitor arrived with a trash can. They quickly covered themselves and departed, hating the janitor for ruining their happy moment. The janitor left to continue his work, and I emerged from my hiding place, drove directly to my car, and drove away. I spent the entire night at my friend's house telling him my depressing tale until dawn. I discovered one missed call from Julie when I looked at my phone. It appeared to be a polite call to let me know she was thinking about me. She must have been relieved to see me go so she could be publicly thrashed by her partner. I returned home this afternoon. Obviously she was still sleeping. Must have been hurting after what happened last night. I headed to my study to plan my retaliation. Her cheating on me hurts, but what's even more ridiculous is that she's sleeping with the man who has ruined my life. I'm currently scrounging around Marcus's wife. I will locate her and forward the recordings of his infidelity. Marcus doesn't have any public social media accounts. His buddy's list is hidden from me. I have no idea what her name is. To be honest, I had no idea she was even alive. Please assist me if you know any tips or strategies for getting concerned because she was not even acknowledging the increasing distance between us. I begged my manager to either stop sending me on work trips so frequently or to split them up between Marcus and me, but he refused. I could handle the client there better, he remarked. I asked, so why do I only receive criticism and he receives all the Achiever awards every quarter? Instead of responding, he made a fictitious assurance that he would suggest my name for the upcoming promotion. He was an awful liar. His expression made it clear that he would not do that. Speaking about Julie, she questioned me why I had left her by herself at the party when she awoke from her deep sleep that night. She laughed and said, Oh, don't be a jealous baby. It was just a dance. I grinned and ignored it, saying, You needed me. I thought you were having a fun time with your new friend. She believed I was upset with her for dancing with Marcus. I allowed her to believe that since I would surprise them with an attack. So far, I have not found Marcus's wife through my search. I attempted searching using Marcus's last name, but the results were overwhelming. I'm considering searching through the company's database for Marcus's address and going to his house. I can think of no other choice but this. We would gladly accept any better suggestion than this one. These days, isn't a buddy request really equivalent to second base? It appears that Marcus is a social media seducer par excellence, in addition to being a skilled manipulator at work. Marcus, really, hard emojis. Do we attend middle school? Ah, the classic dance floor diplomacy move. And it was just a dance.
because there are few things that set innocence like getting down with your office rival in front of your husband. It's a low blow that. That's not how you do it if she wants to keep quiet and avoid drawing attention to herself. Second update. It is nearly impossible to locate someone on social media without a name or handle. As some of you have already mentioned, I was very sure I would find his wife at his place, but then my friend told me about No, my coworker. I had a feeling he could assist me here, having knowledge about Marcus's wife. I don't like him and he has a loud mouth, but I needed his assistance. I questioned him whether he knew about Marcus's wife in a casual conversation that I had with him when I arrived to work the following day. That's how he is, a bothersome piece of garbage. He grinned and said, I knew you would ask about her, especially after last night's twerking. I didn't have the confidence to ask him her name, even though I really wanted to. Perhaps sensing my powerlessness and desperation, he inquired, do you want to know her name or contact? I shouted out, excited please. He gave me her name and promised to get her number from his sister. I discovered her on Twitter after searching for her on all social media sites. Noah doesn't need the number, I informed him. Her Twitter bio stated that she was employed by one of the top multinational companies in a managerial capacity. I texted her, telling her I needed to talk to her about her husband, something really urgent. In response, she requested me to call her and gave me her number. I got the impression from her remark that she was a strong, sensitive woman. I gave her a ring and said hello. I gently informed her that I had the video of her husband and my wife together and that they were probably planning something. She requested that we get together after work. Sure, I replied. Her aura captivated me when I went to meet her. She is undoubtedly a wise and valuable woman. How could a man with such intelligence cheat on a woman of such beauty? Yes, only an idiot such as Marcus would. I showed her the video and told her the story. Her cheeks flushed with tears, but she didn't lose her cool. Marcus had informed her that spouses were not invited to the office party, so she was surprised to see that they had received an invitation. I questioned her about why she never questioned him. She admitted that she had caught him twice using social media to sex an unidentified lady, but she had forgiven him because it wasn't serious. I informed her that although Marcus says he is single, he has a bad reputation at work and has been linked to a lot of junior associates. She uttered obscenities loudly. Up until then, she had been holding herself in. We're in on this together now, plotting our revenge. She said, that son of a bee needs to be taught a lesson. Do you have any plans in mind? I said, no, not right now, but I'm definitely going to make them pay for all the humiliation. She responded, let's do it together. We've thought of some hilarious ways to screw Marcus and Julie. Following the last nail in the coffin, we'll update this topic. Marcus, to be honest, is probably terrified by her and is forced to settle for those who are simple-minded, like your wife, OP. Marcus's image as the workplace Casanova means you'll never run out of material for your small personal feud. Third update, Bell, hold on to your seat, this is going to get crazy. Hot, steaming retribution has been given to Julie and Marcus. Sandra, 33-year-old female fair partner, and I devised the following retaliation scheme. 1. We chose to ignore their affair, the sleepover with friends, which we knew they were lying about. We overlooked it. Both of us pretended that we didn't care about the F because we were so busy at work. 2. I co-owned the house with Julie. I revised the paperwork and got Julie to sign it designating me as the only owner of the home. Not violently, but strategically. Once, while pretending to be going shopping with friends, she was on her way to meet her affair partner. I purposely obstructed her path to the restroom wardrobe, causing her to arrive late. I asked her to sign a form renewing her insurance as she was ready to go. Since I cover all of her insurance costs, there was no reason for suspicion. She simply signs it and moves on. I kept the document proving I owned the house in between those papers. Without actually viewing them, she signed each one. 3. Sandra took Marcus's automobile, sold it to a newbie, and took all the money out of their joint bank account. 4. Sandra owned the home where she lived. She obtained a restraining order against Marcus on that property and surreptitiously leased it to a new renter. 5. I stopped playing any cards that Julie was still alive on. The retaliation for numbers 3, 4, and 5 was carried out in the final moments before they were ghosted. Marcus received a five-day Florida couple's vacation from Sandra as a birthday present. But a day prior to the trip, Sandra made up an excuse about a work-related issue that prevented her from going. Marcus immediately proposed that he and his male companion go on this trip together. 
Sander consented as the package included no refund. I told Julia falsehood at the same time, saying I was leaving for a 15-day work trip. During that time, I made a hotel reservation. She told me over the phone that she was traveling to Vegas for her school friend's wedding. I asked her if she had any friends that I was unaware of. She mentioned that they hadn't spoken for a while, but then she called and extended an invitation, to which Julie was unable to decline. She was feeding me lie after lie, and I answered, sure, have fun. Sandra had purchased a five-day trip for Marcus and Julie to Florida. We carried out our plans using the ransom. In addition to getting a restraining order against him, Sandra sold her house, depleted the joint account, and sold his automobile. I boxed up Julie's belongings and stored them, blocking the cards she had been using. After her return, the information would be mailed to her along with updated property documents and a restraining order. Marcus could have left me alone at work, and that would have been that. However, he trailed me. He has boastfully told his co-workers that I was unable to satisfy my wife, thus he has been having affairs with her. He made absurd remarks that alluded to me. He then showed his buddies Julie's chat message in which she expressed her desire for Marcus and even made fun of me for just providing her with vaginal sex while Marcus provided her with an exhilarating experience. He used to make fun of me by reading aloud from her chats without taking my name. I made the decision to videotape that and use it against him. Even some of Marcus's camp's employees came over to me to make fun of me for taking my wife. I demanded that Marcus be fired for mentally abusing me by mail, together with all the relevant data, to the company's HR department. I even issued a threat to the management, saying that I will expose all of his abuse at work on social media and other review sites. The company suffered significant losses as a result of this bad PR, and HR assured me that Marcus would be fired as soon as he returned from his five-day leave of absence because there was proof that he was a bully. In addition, I have submitted my resignation and requested an expedited discharge. Julie may pick up the letter I left her when she got back from her trip, to provide her with the necessary closure. It is essentially the same as what I have said in this update, but with a bit additional information. I told her the truth about Marcus. Despite his claims to the contrary, he is not single and has a wife, who is currently my girlfriend. Because of our betrayal, Sandra and I grew close and discovered how much we had in common. She's a successful professional who is intelligent and witty. My loser wife is a jerk. She has never worked a full-time job. Instead, she used to moan about her part-time work because it seemed like a burden to her. Card right before she left for the trip. It would have vanished by the time he got to Florida. It's going to be a comical situation in Florida. Julie's card has been blocked and Marcus does not have any cards. Just before Marcus and Julie were ready to travel to Florida, Sandra also gave the hotel a call to cancel the reservations. It doesn't matter that she didn't receive a reimbursement. We would sacrifice everything to witness the enjoyment these losers derided people deride their desired journey. Because we don't want to spend any more money on these losers, Sandra and I have also chosen not to file for divorce. They can afford to get rid of us if they so choose. But that seems improbable at this point. Both of us have made updates to our wills and taken them out of all of our possessions. Since they are our wives, they shouldn't automatically receive anything in the event that something untoward happens to us. To start over, Sandra and I are relocating to Seattle. The client company extended an invitation for me to join them directly. Double the raise from my previous employer. Sandra expressed her desire to enjoy a short vacation from work. She didn't need to worry for a few years because she had adequate savings. Our possessions are en route to Seattle already. We'll be vacationing in the Caribbean for a month, enjoying the sun, by the time Marcus and Julie get back. With Sandra, a woman who shares my interest and intelligence, we have so much fun. I feel like myself again. Our relationship is not meant to last forever. Yes, we want to enjoy our time together as much as possible, but we also don't want to burden ourselves with that. Oh, to be a fly on the wall when they discover that their holiday in paradise has devolved into a farce. To be honest, OP, I'm proud of you. This is very skillful. This is the perfect superhero conclusion that everyone has been waiting for. You, the main character, right off into the sunset laughing all the way to the Caribbean with a stunning woman while the losers are left in the dust. Finding someone who is eager to scorch the earth with you instead of just willing to do so says, soul make more than anything else. Since it takes a certain kind of companion to ignite the match, anyone can hold your hand through the good times. Let's face it, how you interpret all of this? 
Have you discovered fresh love in the most unlikely of locations? I'm grateful.